The biggest science project of the entire endeavor, I think, for software was the soft keyboard. We, we knew we'd be able to create a keyboard, but we knew we'd be compared against the BlackBerry. The BlackBerry was the most popular smartphone out at the time. It was called the CrackBerry, right? We got somewhere in, I think it was early 2006, and I could see the light at the end of the tunnel for, for the iPhone OS. I could see when it was gonna ship. The keyboard wasn't there. Its accuracy was poor. Uh, it was just, it was hard to use. If you wanted to write an email, you'd give up. And so I went and I froze all development on all applications. And every UI developer at this point moved over and I said, we're gonna spend a few weeks and everyone's building keyboards. And at the end of, you know, let's say three weeks, we all got together in a conference room and everyone got up and started demoing the keyboards they created. And some of these were just crazy. I mean, you'd, you'd do these gestures, these super complex gestures that were really hard to learn. And one guy came in with his keyboard that looked like a natural QWERTY keyboard. It's the kind of keyboard you use on your computer. It looked just like that. You start to use it and it worked amazingly well. It was so accurate, which was completely different from the one we had three weeks earlier that looked similar but didn't work at all. So we started digging into what did you do? And there are all these techniques you use, AI techniques and others, to figure out what you're trying to type. So if you type the letter T, there's a high probability you're gonna type H next. The is a common word. So the H button would stay the same physical size to your eye, but the hit region would grow. And so when you went toward the H, you're probably gonna hit the H now. And now the E is probably huge as a hit region, and you're gonna hit the E.